welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be all about um, what is working um, really well uh, currently with my 2024 system so you guys know that I've been using the hemlock and oak daily and then I also been using the Leuchtturm a6 um, daily and weekly and those two have been chef's kiss so I wanted to talk to you guys about what I've been doing and kind of give you some flips and just talk about like what I'm really gravitating to in this current phase um, of my planning. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first planner that I want to talk about is the Hemlock and Oak. Um, so I, I really like this planner, but I have some internal mixed feelings about it um part of me is upset at the fact that you can't really put this like put a cover on it and though it is a really beautiful book the band which i never really considered the band really actually irritating me it really does irritate me and i kind of understand why people cut theirs off this one is completely removable but if i remove it then everything that i have tucked in it will go flying everywhere and then i won't feel like i want to take the book because i'll i'll have nothing to keep this closed more or less i also can't find anything that really fits this i think a clear cover would do this planner justice and I've considered maybe asking for one to be custom made but I don't even know if I'm really wanting to commit to that nonetheless I think this is a really pretty book um I am still really excited to use this as a bullet journal and I have been using it as a bullet journal but I don't know you guys the hemlock and oak is intimidating because it's a whole page of stuff and look how thick it is it's really thick i mean this is thicker than all my daily planners that i have for this year and yeah it's it's a little big i mean and the fact that it's such a minimal design and also the fact that there's free range to do whatever is a little intimidating because I've been so used to some form of structure when it comes to like the plum planner or when it comes to like my bullet journals I have in my mind how I'm going to set up my bullet journals and so I follow that and I don't really stray from that. And then like Happy Planner was kind of structured too because Dashboard had like all these different areas. But this is like free range and I don't think, I think part of me is like, that's very intimidating. So anyway, I've been playing around with uh, how I've, you know, how I've been setting this up. So my intentions um, is to really make this a, a, like a really functional place. Um, I'm really, really set on making what I have picked out for 2024 really work versus just purchasing more planners and trying them because last year before I started using the happy planner back at the end of I want to say what was it July end of July um I was bouncing around in the beginning of the year mainly sticking to the plum planner but really bouncing around trying to really find like what I really liked the most um but nonetheless I've stuck a pocket here and my intentions is to make like my ideal routine schedule so most of you know uh I follow a schedule I put my son on a schedule it works for us um and so sometimes I want to do other things and I try to rearrange our schedule to fit, you know, like my personal needs or wants and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So what I wanted to do was map out like what would my ideal day look like um, if I use time very effectively. I know realistically that doesn't always span out because life happens, things happen and yeah, that's thus far things do happen so um, I stuck this in here this also has a couple of little other things behind it I'm really trying to get this out of here but 
I couldn't. And excuse my hands, I wash them so if they look dry, they are. Um, yeah, I just put like another little monthly tracker in here and like two of these AM and PM routine sheets because like I said, I wanted to create some ideal routines. Initially, I wanted to put like a key here, like a, like a bullet journal key, but I was like, I don't, I haven't used, my goodness, this is going to drive me crazy. I haven't used a key in such a long time, so it would be just there at this point. So let's go ahead and look at um, January thus far. So this is what January's monthly is looking like. I've been using this to jot down specifics that may be coming up for the particular week that we're in. So um, instead of, you know, like pre-filling them into the days, I've just been using the sidebar to pre-fill things that may be coming up. Um, I know I can always use sticky notes, but most of this that I've written here, I know are set in stone. It's just that I don't know specific days because those kind of things can change, but I know that the thing that I've written is going to happen. This is my countdown to when my husband comes back and been definitely keeping up with that. Um, and then these are the dailies. So I wanted to walk you guys through what these dailies have consisted of. So thus far, I've been using like what one thing that I want to focus on for the day. Like I mentioned in my 20, my official 2024 lineup, I intend to use this planner exactly how it is laid out, which is a focus, your intentions, your schedule, and then your today, which basically like your to-do list, notes, what have you. Um, so it really works for me um, because it's similar to, and that's part of why I chose this planner, is because it's similar to mapping out some different areas of my day. And so um, I chose this specifically for that. Now, if I didn't want to follow this planner as it was intended, then I would have just chose a bullet journal because then in that regard, I could you know, do what I needed to do, make things the way I needed to make them. But I just don't have time for like a real bullet journal this time around. So this works for me. So I have one thing that I'm focusing on for the day and then um, have some intentions, intentional things that will probably get touched, maybe won't get touched throughout the day. So those are like my intentions um, for, you know, getting through the day. And then like, I have my standard to do list and then maybe some notes or maybe journaling. So that has been working really good for me. And then I have like our Monday through Friday routine, which Monday through Friday is the most busiest days because my son has appointments. I might have to go grocery shopping. Um, I might have to leave the house for something. We might have something going on. It, it just never, you know, it's, it, it's always something going on Monday through Friday. So Monday through Friday are really busy and you'll see that. And then this planner came with the weekly stickies because this was a pre-order. And so um, I got the weekly stickies for free. And so I just used this to basically map out my, my week. So like my appointments are highlighted for me so that if I were to use just this planner solely and nothing else, at least I know everything is here. So like all my days are here, the months are here, and then the week is here. This was Tuesday, obviously beginning of the year. There's not a whole lot going on um, anyway, so you won't see a whole lot of anything, but um, this is what Tuesday and Wednesday look like again keeping up with routines this is something relevant to what I did in my happy planner and other planners which was taping things in so like I did a bit of journaling here I taped in an appointment card this was a reminder for my mother I had a note here so yeah again keeping up with my running to-do list my to-do list that's ever forever going um the reason why my to-do lists are so long is not because i have a whole lot of things to do in a day i do um 
but that's not the case. The reason why it's so long is because I write things down. I write routines and stuff down so that I don't forget certain things. Even though I know what our routines are um, in the a.m. and in the p.m., sometimes I change things. Like, lately I've been bathing my son, like, every other day and maybe washing him down on the days that I don't, like, do, like, a tub bath because I get really tired. I usually bathe him every day, but lately in these, like, winter months when he's has he hasn't been anywhere, he's not really dirty, so I just wash him up. And so I remember those because if I didn't, you know, like remember that, then I don't know. I probably just do usual routine. Um, sometimes I have so much stuff going on in my head that I just need to put it down on paper. So mapping it out in a to-do list and then checking it off, be like, did I do this today? Yes, that, that helps me. So there's that. And then I like to see our schedule I like to see what times my son took naps. I like to see exactly what we did and when we did that. Um, so I like the schedule aspect of it. And then this is Saturday, Sunday. You see what I mean by the weekdays are like chaotic and busy. And then the weekends are like little to nothing except for like a to-do list and part of a schedule. It's mainly because nothing ever happens on the weekends. It's usually like I didn't even finish the p.m. schedule because I think my son went to my mother-in-law's house. And so I didn't even finish like the schedule. I think I just chilled for the rest of the day. I didn't even have to write in like bedtime routines or none of that. So that was um, Saturday, Sunday, and then this is this week. This week, we started off again. I hate Mondays. Mondays mean back to business, back to work. And so I have my weekly hair, and I have our schedule, and I did a little bit of journaling. I've been very frustrated. I know people probably have told me that I should be really happy that I'm home, um, considering that we came from Germany, and then considering that we lived in Altus, um, and we haven't really been home, but for a lot of people, including myself, home is not always a good thing for me. Um, I don't get along with my family as much and the city in which I grew up in and lived my whole life kind of depresses me and it's great for my son to be here, um, and to be familiar with everyone and to spend that quality time it's making me feel like I'm just, I'm so over it. Like I, I'm counting the days, the days that I can finally leave. But yeah, being home is very depressing sometimes. Um, and right now it's very depressing for me. So um, yeah, I don't look forward to <laughs> Mondays because I know that Mondays mean back to work and it feels like when I used to live here and work here, it just, ugh. I hate it. Rush hour is horrible. Winters are horrible. I'm doing a lot of driving in the city in which I hate. So yes, I hate Mondays. Weekends, I don't do too much of that. So there's that. And then this was yesterday, basic, basic Wednesday. And then I made this. Basically what this is, is just a junior disc bound a double-sided clear pocket and all I did was cut the holes off and round out the edges so that they weren't very sharp and that they looked similar to the edges here and I stuck an adhesive pocket on the front here and it already had double pockets so I stuck an adhesive pocket here mainly to give me quicker access to some stuff so I wouldn't have to keep shuffling things around and then I stuck some um, things that some relevant things that I'm using in the back here and that is like my page marker I was thinking to buy one I was gonna get a jelly page marker but I was like it's like 10 bucks for just like one page marker and then I'm gonna have to pay for shipping and then wait for it to be shipped no no ma'am um I was like I could do that myself just get 
like because obviously I'm not I don't have all of my crafting tools with me here so I'm like what can I do to make easy DIY project go get some double-sided pockets made for ditching your disbound and cut the holes off and voila got yourself a page marker so this works I've stuck in some flags some dots as you can see I use the dots the page flags will definitely come especially when I start getting information that I've written on pages that I want to go back to and like filter through the page um, flags will definitely work for that and mind you this book is hefty so you're probably gonna want that and um yeah that's what Wednesday and Thursday look like and then what I kind of do is during like some little bit of free time is I start prepping for the next day and so I start mapping out my schedule um and adding in some of those to do's so I start planning like if my son takes a nap or I get a little bit of free time I start mapping out things so that way when bedtime comes I'm not forgetting stuff because I'm tired which usually happens or what has happened to me in the past with planning at night um, I just start forgetting things and I also don't plan as much at night I started planning early in the morning like having an hour or two to sit down and look over everything and then like like I said um, I kind of do a little bit of forward planning during that hour or two and then like when I get free time in the middle of the day I do the rest of it and then at some point I will touch base with this if not today um, then tomorrow early morning I will look over this and touch base so that I'm not forgetting anything important so that has been the hemlock and oak planner and I intend to use like icon stickers and things like that. I do have icon stickers that I tucked in the back here. I, I got some from like Amazon and then I cut up some like Happy Planner ones just to have on hand in the event that I take this planner with me. Okay, so that was the Hemlock and Oak. Now the second thing that I want to talk about is two things that I'm really loving a whole lot, like a whole lot. Okay, so this Midori, I'm loving this so much. My page markers, the little book um, marker thingies, the ones that come with this journal not this journal the cover they fell out like one was already coming out and then the other one I just kind of cut it out and I was kind of pissed off about that but as because of how it came out it didn't it doesn't really look like it was like meant to be in the first place so it works out but those two things came out but anyway I really like this Midori so freaking much um I've really been pushing back with trying really hard to not fall into trends because trends are just not my thing and obviously I find it so funny how everyone including myself we jumped on the bandwagon of buying the habino but if you look today what is today the the 11th the 11th y'all half of everybody who bought a habino is selling their habino gave up on it never touched it that's what i mean by like buying stuff that you know you won't use and then you try to get rid of it and it's just it's funny to me how gullible we are sometimes for like stationary instead of just buying stuff that we know we will like and that we know we will use we spend our money on things that we know we won't use and we know we won't like but anyway that's neither here or there to each his own um, I really like this Midori a lot so it's like a no fluff kind of a thing and that's what I really like about it is because it is like a no fluff it I mean it's kind of like the Leuchtturm for example a whole lot of people weren't even considering or thinking about the Leuchtturm and then all of a sudden you see someone who's made like a viral video about it and now everybody is jumping on buying it and I'm not throwing shade at anyone but I'm just I'm 
trying to relay how these things work and what I'm trying to push away from. So like the Midori products are definitely really, really nice. And what I'm really liking right now is this paper. We don't see too many videos on this and it's quite unfortunate because it does have such really beautiful paper. Um, not even just for journaling purposes, but just for like everyday use. This is what my weeks have looked like thus far. This is an undated weekly. It's just like the monthly block and then the pages look like this. And then I basically just put in my weekly. It's super clean y'all and I really like it. Now, what I'm really liking the most of everything is this bad boy right here. So I really like this Midori. I can even take it out because there's no more like little strings hanging here, keeping it in anymore. Um, so what, like I said, like what I really like is that when you bend this back on itself, it does lay flat, like open. It will stay open. And I really like the clean aesthetic of this. I also like the allotted space. I like this more than I like the, the um, hemlock and oak. And I paid quite a bit of money for that hemlock and oak with all the add-ons and then the planner in itself. But I like this better than the hemlock and oak. And I like this because of how simple it is. But also, I just really like the paper. I've already started to do stuff for February. And then when it comes to the dailies, you'll also notice some differences. I took off the stickers because they were driving me nuts something that I'm not really used to doing so that that junk had to go it was driving me freaking nuts I'm gonna put my page marker back ooh, ooh. so like I said this is what my daily's been looking at looking like oh my goodness and then what I've been doing is basically what I'm done in the hemlock and oak my schedule it's basically my schedule in miniature form but it is everything in my schedule. Every little thing that I've done within that hour, I've writ written it here. And then there's notes in here. There's smart remarks. There's reminders. There's all kinds of stuff. So that's what this has been looking like. And it's really fun to use because like I said, I really enjoy the paper. I really enjoy brain dumping my day onto this. And I do the same thing with forward planning and figuring out my schedule. I like this too. I like this because this is um, smaller, a lot more portable than the Hemlock and Oak for one. And then I like the paper a lot. Um, now, I always said, if they, Midori, if you, if you watching, y'all need to make this go viral. Um, Y'all's paper it's really good so if y'all were to make a habino with the midori paper i'm pretty sure a lot of people would get behind that because there is not there's a few of us there's quite a few of us actually who are not big tomoe river paper fans myself included like i like the thinness of the paper but i'm not a real big fan of it if that makes sense like it's not the first paper that I'm going to gravitate to you know like I'd prefer I prefer the Midori paper over the Tomoe River paper I prefer the Leuchtturm paper over the Mols Molskine paper but I like both does that make sense so if y'all's listening y'all needs to go ahead and make that happen in the future because listen to your consumers um it ain't like Tomoe River is not like the holy grail. There are other pap papers that I consider to be holy grails. Um, and that's coming after having tried Tomoe River paper last year and loving it, but then not loving it for the fact that you have to fight with your pen. So yeah, yeah to that. But anyway, <laughs> Anyway, this is what I've been doing in this Midori. So this one, y'all, top contender, really liking it, really liking this. Not only that, inside this cover, 
this bad boy feels great. Like holding it, it feels great. It looks great. It makes me excited to pick this up and put this in my hands. Now, my second most used planner in this whole 2024 lineup, drop the mic. It is the Leuchtturm 1917 Daily A6 size, A6 pocket, and the Weekly. That came out so wrong, but you guys know what I mean. It's the A6 pocket um, formats for the weekly and the daily. This has been Chef's Kiss. Y'all, I'm loving the fact that there is a tracker here. I'm loving the fact that there's weekly and notes. This is what I liked about the Hobonichi and also what I did in my bullet journals last year. Um, really like the weekly with notes. I've also used this layout in rings with Filofax, so it makes sense. I really, really do like this layout. Um, in the weekly one, I started utilizing the back pages. I haven't done a, a whole lot in the back, but I, um, I drew out like a book log. So these are some of the books that I have queued in my library. Some of them I'm currently reading and then as I finish them, I'm going to check them off. Right now, I'm, I'm reading Harry Potter and I'm finishing up the last hour of Viola Davis's book. So, which like I said, it's been a really good book. It's just, I only get time to, to listen, to read it in the morning. And so, yeah, that. Um, but yeah, I have a book log here. What I, what I also want to draw in here is like my wish list, um, favorite foods. Like I want to make a whole collections back here of things. My stationary purchase list. I want to, I want to do that. Um, because I, I just, I don't know. I just want to keep track of all of that stuff. Um, the other thing that I'm really liking is this daily which last year when I got this I was so pumped about the Habino I didn't even think about the Loistar but then again with the trackers but then I started playing around with the daily the 2023 version and loved it so this is what my dailies have looked like thus far so obviously January 1st and 2nd and then Wednesday and Thursday. And as you can see, I basically just do a daily to-do list. This really works for me, just making a to-do list. Um, and then I make notes and I like to tape in sticky notes and things because the canvas is so small as is. And so having like sticky notes and like functional sticky notes, they really help add more layers to your daily page um not aesthetically but like functionally they add a lot of layers like you could have like a shopping list sticky note or like if this is not enough note space you can have another note sticky note or you could have you know like a whatever sticky note like a daily tracker sticky note like you could do so much with you know like add-ins tip-ins things like that um, and then here's Sunday, here's Sunday, and then here's that note page. So what I did on the note page is I basically mapped out the following week, and then I had a shopping list that I was curating, um, that I need to get, um, this week when I go grocery shopping, and then I have a reminder that I need to get an oil change. So this is a sticky note on top of a sticky note, and this is what I mean by layers, because these are both removable, so, um, the layers definitely help add more information into your pocket, especially if you don't have, like, a whole lot of space allotted to begin with. And then this is this Monday. And again, sticky notes. Monday. Uh, oops, did I skip a day, y'all? Oh, Monday, Tuesday. And then Wednesday. And then, of course, I started doing some decorations. And then here we are today. And again, I have a sticky note here just in case I need to expand on any information. I stuck this here um, 
and then I use these I know a lot of people don't use these but I use these because they add a little bit of weight of keeping them here but I did tie down the Loistrom ones like I tie a knot at the end of them because they're really long and instead of cutting them I just tie them but I like using the covers like bookmarks there we go bookmarks a lot better and this does stay open when you like push the spine down it will stay open but this is what my dailies have looked like and I, like I said I'm gravitating towards this the pocket ones a lot more this also has note pages in the back which I have not utilized yet I don't know if I will create like a collections back here because there's not many there's like I lied maybe I was maybe these are perforated hmm are they the same? Nope, I lied. I can also do a collections back here because these are all like note pages that I can fill. Um, and I don't know, if I run out of space of things I want to collect in the weekly, then I will most definitely start my collections in the back of this or do some trackers. What I'm thinking about doing because like I said, if I were to phase out the hemlock and oak completely, this and the Midori would be like my go-tos, like the two planners that I would definitely use all year round. Um, what I'm thinking to do is add some, some yearly trackers into this so that I can track what bills we pay, like I did when I had my reference binder last year. So I'm thinking about that. I don't know if I'm going to draw it out. I don't know if I'm going to buy, buy something and then um tape it in i don't know yet i haven't figured that out i do have a pint size planning series playlist that all of the videos pertaining to pint size planning and um using it and how, how to make it you know like useful how to maximize the space all of that will be um in that playlist so if that's something you're interested in every video that i filmed this year about pocket or in my Loishterm, Loishterm and my Midori will all go into that tab. So yes, you guys, this is my planner. This is the system and this is what I've done thus far in the short amount of time that we've had in 2024. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you got a little bit of inspiration from it. You've also heard me rant a little bit about the trends that's going on and hopefully you can stay away from those trends this year and focus on what you love. Um, that's my goal is to focus on what I love and um, yeah so if that amazes or amuses you continue watching um stay stay tuned for all of the other videos to come this year and i will see you guys in the next planner related video bye loves